Welcome to Raptorisms over Crystallis. Let's start right from the beginning. 1997, October 1st, the end day. Savage war engulfs the world. Civilization is destroyed. An evolution had taken place. The Earth's axis shifted and all creatures became mutated. Life would never be the same. Those surviving vowed not to repeat their mistakes of the past and erected a great tower in the sky. To oppress evil forever, dot dot dot. Obviously that's not gonna happen, but let's just play with it for now. Anyway, start screen over here, let's start a new game. A hundred years have passed. Most of the Earth has become dominated by mutated creatures. People worked together to rebuild their villages and their lives, but they still lived in fear. As they feared the rebirth of evil, they remembered the construction of the tower and of its consequences once activation had begun. Once evil emerged, would they still stand the chance? There was still one hope. And we're about to name that hope right now. This is the naming screen right here, and as with most old school video games, you only have a limited number of characters, so I'm just gonna name the character Raptor with six letters. Capital R, A P T O R. Now, as with most RPG main characters, this character basically never speaks. There's some very rare exceptions, but yeah, for the most part, other characters are just saying your name and you're not really saying anything back. Anyway, let's awaken this character from his hundred year slumber and get out of the cave. This is a scene I've seen many, many times. I'm, I'm gonna get into that in a little bit because I've played basically this main stage uh, so many times without having proceeded to the next one. All right, so here I'm coming out of the cave here and I'm going to explore the first town. Now, when I was a kid, I never really understood the concept of the RPG, at least when I first started playing this game and until one of my friends actually gave me um, and Nintendo Power walkthrough because of that I've played this stage many many times without realizing there was something after this now Here's where I get my first money um, This jerk over here wants me to bow down before him after giving me the money. So screw this guy anyway um, This is a typical town you have an inn you have a random house that you can walk into and talk to people There is an armor store a good store Various people walking around who I'm gonna drop some minor hints to you and the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna buy this alarm flute that I'm gonna need for a character coming up. The alarm flute is an item that you, you can use to uh, wake up characters who are asleep. It happens at least twice in this game. And so there goes uh, half of my money so far. But let me get my first sword and then I'll hit the overworld map and then I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, my background with this game. All right, so here's some more hints here about the windmill guard. And now I'm about to get the Sword of Wind. There are four swords in this game, each with different elements, and the Sword of Wind is basically the weakest one, but also the first one you get, so naturally it's not going to be that strong. When I was a kid, I would just get this sword right in the town, I would beat up enemies, and then I'd start the game anew the next day. Here, yep, see I've seen many times before, I'm equipping the sword, and I'm about to head out into the world. Alright, so... Um, when I got this walkthrough from my friends, I realized, okay, there are actually many, many stages to this game, and I should actually learn about this game, learn about the different stages, learn about the different hints that I have to pick up on in order to progress, and I ended up uh, beating the game because of that. And I've played this game many, many times actually since then. It took me, I guess when I first bought this game, it was 1990, or actually even later, probably 1991 or 1992, because the Super Nintendo was actually already out by that point. Alright, first slime over here. These guys are generally kind of weak, but also because they move around randomly, they're not really worth going for. I prefer to fight the stronger enemies here because they move more predictably. The swords here, you can charge them up for charged attacks, or you could also just hit them quickly when you get close to the enemies, but those you know, naturally because you're so close to them, you risk getting hit yourself, so I usually play the game with mostly beam attacks. And when I was a kid, I played pretty much exclusively with beam attacks, but as you're going to see with some of the later bosses, it actually pays to get up close sometimes and just hit them repeatedly as fast as you can. But usually when I'm walking around the overworld map, I'm going to charge up because it doesn't do any harm, really. If you're in a boss fight, on the other hand, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time charging up. Anyway, so like I said, I got this game probably in 91 or 92 when I first got the Nintendo Entertainment System, 
and um, I didn't know how to play this game, didn't know anything about RPGs. But something else I learned when I got this uh, walkthrough from my friend was actually there is a cheat code. You can press A, B on the first player controller and A on the second player controller, and that will actually teleport you through some of the later stages uh, without you haven't actually earned the right to go through them. And through that, I wanted to get through these other stages, and so I had to learn how to play the game properly. So now I'm um, going through this uh, cave right here, out back in the real world, and I have to uh, start up this windmill, obviously. I heard that from the people in town, and, you know, I'm gonna meet Zebu, one of the wise men, in just a minute, and he's gonna tell me that I have to open the, uh, the windmill cave in order to progress, and if I do that, he's actually going to teach me a spell. This game has a whole bunch of spells, a whole bunch of items, and it's really actually impressive for a Nintendo Entertainment System game. If you compare this to the original Zelda, the original Final Fantasy, those games are such trash compared to this one. Um, and of course, you know, because Final Fantasy and Zelda came earlier, those got these sequels and spin-offs on the Super Nintendo and many systems since then. This game doesn't really leave itself open to getting uh, a sequel or anything like that, but there was a version made for the Game Boy Color. I've never played that, and it's my understanding that some things about that game are a little bit different. For example, in this game, with you uh, having these different elemental swords, some of them work on different enemies and some of them don't. Alright, so here uh, we have Zebu, one of the wise men, and he's telling me that I have to make the windmill work in order to get a magical spell. That's going to be the spell of refresh, which is actually really useful. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, um, with the different swords that you have, some of them are effective on different enemies and some of them aren't. I believe in the Game Boy Color version, on the other hand, you can use pretty much any sword on anyone and it's just going to change the effectiveness or the strength of that sword. Another really downside of this game is that uh, with the power level system here, so right now I'm at power level 1 and with a little bit of grinding, you can see the experience bar uh, at the bottom of the screen right now, I have 20 experience and I need 30 to progress to the next level. If you don't have the right power level, if your power level is not high enough, there are some enemies you simply cannot hurt at all, regardless of which sword you use. And that's kind of annoying, but in the Game Boy Color version, I believe they did away with that. Anyway, to get past uh, the boss of this stage, I have to get at least to power level 3. And that boss is going to be in this cave back here that I'm going to open up in just a minute. Right now, it's still blocked off. Alright, so I'm going to grind a little bit and I'm going to get up to power level 3 first. You know, of course, power level 2, which I believe only the enemies out here I can hurt. After this, I can actually enter the cave and take care of some of those enemies, which I cannot hurt until I'm at least at power level 2. Alright, so what I'm going to do with this video series is, while I'm doing stuff like grinding or walking around the overworld map, going through dungeons, things like that, where I don't actually have to narrate what's going on in the game, I'm going to be rambling about various topics. And if you have any topics you want me to talk about, you go ahead and leave those in the comments, contact me on Twitter or whatever else, and if I think I have actually something interesting to say about those topics, maybe I'll run with them and do them in my future videos. Uh, for example, one of the things I want to talk about is Star Wars, since I've never actually done a proper review of any of these uh, new Star Wars movies, Episodes 7, 8, and 9. Um, I want to talk a little bit about politics more, especially with the election lawsuits still ongoing, and there are just several random topics I want to talk about. Not necessarily anime topics, because if I want to talk about anime, I'll do a proper video with my face on screen for something like that. But generally for random style topics, just things I want to get off my chest, or things that people have random questions about this would be the right time for something like that all right so i leveled up to level two here i'm going to wake up this guy with the alarm flute and he's going to give me the key to the windmill so let me equip that depending on what kind of item you have it's going to appear on a different uh, row in the item screen and um, there's some items that you can drop, some that you can't drop, some that you can get anytime, some that you can only get at different times. Once again, this is really a good game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it's kind of, I guess, to be expected since it came out really late in the life of the NES, probably one of the last video games ever made for that, and the Super Nintendo had already been out at this point. You know, when you live with a cheap family and you end up being really cheap yourself, why bother paying for uh, the latest system when you can get the other ones for uh, a cheaper price? And ever since then, I've been like five years behind on my gaming because I got the NES when the Super Nintendo came out, I got the Super Nintendo when the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 were already out, and I finally got the uh, PlayStation 2 actually when that was the latest system, but I spent most of my early years with the PlayStation 2 just playing older PlayStation games. And by the time I actually got around to PlayStation 2 games, the PlayStation 3 had already been out. Um, actually, just recently, I bought a Nintendo Switch. Uh, my girlfriend's the one playing that one right now with uh, Dobutsu no Mori, also known as, I guess, uh, what's it called? Uh, Animal Crossing, I think. 
and um, eventually I might play one of those games, record one of those, but for now I just want to try out this system, uh, like recording video editing with emulators, because those I can do directly on my computer, and if all goes well, maybe I'll do some Switch games, or, you know, PS4, PS5 games, if I ever get one of those systems. Alright, so let me head back to Zebu, and Zebu is going to know that I opened the windmill, and he's going to teach me the spell of refresh. Now, as you can see on the bottom, um, you know, menu bar here, I'm at power level 2, I have $114, my experience is 10 out of 60, with 60 I can move up to power level 3, and my magic power right now is 34 of 34. Right, until now I couldn't use any magical spells, so there was nothing I could do with those magic points, but right now I can equip the spell of refresh, and once I use that, I can actually trade off magic points for life, which you can see my life bar refilling at this time. The other thing you can see on the menu bar at the bottom is the charge bar, which shows you how much I need to charge to get up to level 1, and each sword has three charge levels. Right now, I can only charge up to level 1 because I only have the sword, but each sword has a corresponding ball. With that ball, I can charge up to level 2, and the effect of a ball is that I can break various things, or perhaps I can construct various things. They have different side effects, so for example, the ball of wind can destroy a rock wall. The ball of fire for the sword of fire can um, destroy an ice wall. As you saw in Zebu's cave, there was an ice wall behind him. I will need the sword of fire and the ball of fire to be able to destroy that. The ball of water can create ice bridges over rivers, and um, the ball of thunder can destroy iron walls for some reason. But that's something that's not going to come up for a very long time. For now, you know, I have to get the ball of wind, which is going to be in this cave, and that's going to allow me to get up to the boss of this stage. Once I defeat the boss of this stage, I can move on to the next uh, general stage. Now, there are 10 sort of stages, or at least according to the old walkthrough that I got, there are 10 sort of stages in this game. You can think of it differently, like you can combine a few and think of it as 8 stages perhaps, but this is without a doubt the very first stage of the game and until I actually beat this one boss which is kind of like a vampire like creature I can't move on to the next part. Now there are a few other items I can get at this stage in the game that aren't necessary but can help me do various things. One of them is the medical herb which is kind of useless later in the stage or later in the game for that matter. Um, it can restore a very small little bit of life force which uh, once you get up to higher power levels is just a drop in the bucket. Another thing is the antidote, which can cure poison, and poison in this game, it does not go away over time. You will stay poisoned until you either cure yourself of the poison or until you die. Right. So there are also the warp boots. The warp boots can let you travel to any town that you've previously been to. Later on in the game, you're going to get a spell called Teleport, which will allow you to do the same thing, except you'll do that in exchange for magic points. And we see some bats here. God, I hate bats. The boss that we have coming up uh, uses bats against you, and you're going to see later on how annoying that is. But anyway, so the spell Teleport will let you teleport to a previous town uh, if you use 20 magic points. The warp boots use up one item in exchange for that, and I will probably get some warp boots from this cave later on. But now I just got the ball of wind, and as you're about to see, I can open up a rock wall. Also, when you charge up to level 2, with the ball of wind, the beam gets a little bit wider, which means you can hit enemies a little bit more easier, but it doesn't really have an additional effect on top of that. Other balls, the, uh, the ball of fire, the ball of water, the ball of thunder, they will actually increase your um, attack range um, even wider, or in the ball of fire case, you can actually get um, repetitive hits in, so those are really worth charging up to. The ball of wind doesn't help your attack power all that much, but um, at least it makes things a little bit wider, so for example just now I hit two enemies with one hit, even though they were standing kind of in different lines of fire. Alright, so let me um, take on another enemy here. I just have to grind a little bit more to get up to level 2. Right now I have 57 uh, experience points here. And after that, I am now strong enough to take on the boss of this stage. However, I am down to 37 out of 51 magic points. It is a little bit risky to take on the boss here. I would say level for level, this boss might be the hardest boss in the game, if not one of them, because you don't have much margin for error. And right now, you know, there was a um, an armor store in town, but I haven't bought any armor yet. When I was a kid, I never bought armor early on because I didn't understand the point of it. Later on in the game, 
there is armor you can buy that will make you immune to certain attacks. And I was I would always buy that armor, but I would never buy armor early on because it does make your defense slightly higher, but you're still vulnerable to other attacks. So I figured, let me just dodge and save my money, and later on I'll actually buy armor. That's actually good. All right. So I'm nearing the end of this cave, and I'm purposely going down um, dead ends in here because, once again, I've played this level many, many times. I know exactly where everything is. Later on, I am going to get a little bit lost um, in other mazes because I haven't played those levels so much, although I still have a good idea where I'm going. But uh, the boss is going to be after the next major branch here. Um, yeah, so I'm at level 3. I have 200 bucks. Um, and inflation is a huge problem in this game. So you may as well spend your money in the general area that you're in because later on 200 bucks is going to be nothing. All right, so let me uh, save the game right here. Now you can't technically save inside caves, but because I'm using an emulator, I can save state. Otherwise, the only place that you can really save through the original save system of the game would be through the outside world or in towns or in Zebu's cave in particular. In other caves, you can't do anything. All right, so here is the vampire and he spawns bats. Those bats are the dangerous ones because as you can see, the vampire himself, he teleports around, but otherwise he doesn't really move. He doesn't shoot anything. If you run into him, you will get hurt. However, he's otherwise not that dangerous. So the bats, there are a few strategies here. You could kill the bats. I mean, I killed one already, but they will respawn. Like, yeah, it just respawned already. And I'm probably going to die here, actually. Um, oh, the bats are gone. Crap. Okay, so uh, they respawned and I just died again. So yeah, this is what death looks like in the game. You get a game over screen. You get sent back to the 1997 October 1st, the end day screen. But I'm just going to reload instead from my uh, saved state in the emulator and take on this guy one more time. Now this time I'm actually going to equip refresh, which is something that is going to help me replenish my health points. And also I'm going to go away from my beam only strategy and also stab the guy if he gets close to me. Like I said, when I was a kid, I would pretty much only use beams and that made some of the bosses a little bit harder. But this time around I know better and so if he gets close to me, I will use my stab attack. Otherwise, if he's far, I will use the beams. And the bats... Man... I'm not going to go out of my quick. Okay, so I just killed him. And you have to be careful also because the bat survives until, you know, it actually explodes. So even though the vampire was killed first, the bat lived a little bit longer and that could have actually killed me right there. Anyway, that was embarrassingly bad. Uh, I'm still not really used to the game after not having played in a long time. But now I have the rabbit boots. And with the rabbit boots, I can jump around. It's good for agility. It can help you get over poisonous grass. And yeah, I'm just going to head over to the next town, hit up and in, and save my game. So that's the first stage for now. Later on, I'm going to do some more rants, but this hopefully gives you a feel for the game. And from now on, probably I will not have to do any um, long explanations anymore.